there are a lot of people throughout any career that are going to give you advice and feedback. I see it in my business too. And it's like, I don't trust your opinion. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? The one thing, like when I was, I, I tried to learn how to throw a slider and they would always try to tell me, no, nah, you got to do this grip, do that grip. And I would get in the bullpen and, and I would throw it how they want me to throw it. And I would get in the game and I would throw my grip <laughs> and everybody would be like, oh, see, I told you. I'd be like, yeah, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> This is episode number five of The Shift on R2C2. Yeah. And C, I know um I know you missed me last week. So I, I you know I cut <laughs> yeah. I, I got, what, what were you doing last week? I, I, where, where I was I was in Italy uh with Andrea and we were just like doing the final uh touches for the like just looking at all the wedding stuff. Which by the way, I mean I sent you one pick, but you gotta see this place, man. It's ridiculous. It's nice. Yeah, man, it's ridiculous. It's, you sure you wanna do this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. I am. Um but uh I got nervous, you know. Cameron Maven, I thought he was gonna Wally pit me, man. Man, I, Cam is good, bro. He's he definitely can do this when he's done. <laughs> he can. So I had to uh rush back from Italy, cut my vacation short just to make sure I got here and eliminated Cam. <laughs> but no, it's it's great to have um two guys who, you know, I admire from afar, especially just like I've, I've always seen the personalities of Justice Sheffield coming up in the Yankee system and Dan Vogelback being a an all-star with the Mariners. And now we get to have him on R2C2, see? Super exciting for me. You know, Chef's kind of like a little brother to me. And I told you earlier in the year, I was like, man, they got this dude in Seattle, Vogelbach. I love watching him here. <laughs> and uh, to get him here on the, on the podcast now, getting a chance to talk to him at the all-star game. Uh, we really spent a lot of time together. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. Awesome, yeah. man. So, you guys, welcome uh, to The Shift, our partnership with the MLBPA here on R2C2. Thanks for coming on, guys. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having thanks us. For having excited. Us. The Shift. Dan, we have to, we have to ask you this first, man. Like, uh, when you hit a ball 508 feet as a high schooler how much do you pimp that home run man that had a home run dirt man that's got to be just ridiculous have that well, that's power. back when it was fun that's back when they had the old metal bats oh. um and it sounded like you're hitting a metal pole when it like the big ting yeah. <laughs> in a golf ball um no that was a fun event it was uh i did it twice actually i did it my junior year it was in um tropicana and then senior year, we went, went out to Arizona at Chase Field. It was really cool. It was just basically had the little old jugs pitching machine out there and just lobbing it in there. And you get, you know, they're, I think they did 10 outs with wood bat and 10 outs with metal bat. Everybody wanted to get rid of the wood we bat, you know. Get you get the metal bat. <laughs> so oh, man. But that was a... Uh, that was a that was a fun little event for oh, sure. Oh, they, they had a kid at the Derby this year. That kid was in high school. He yeah. had a ball off the scoreboard. Are you in serious? Cle- in, yeah. uh, in Cleveland, and they they, they 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 took a break in between the real Hummer and Derby and got these kids out there. And my son's like, "Watch this kid, this Blaze kid." And I'm like, "Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever." <laughs> he hit the first fucking ball off the scoreboard. I'm like, "Oh <laughs> my god, this shit is crazy!" Oh man. My god, I'm glad man. I'm retired. This shit is out of control, bro. You don't want to deal with that. Chef, man. Got this, bro. Next oh, 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh, that's justice. I mean, you must be like, I mean, for C, he's dealing with the Super Bowl this year, but he's on the way out. You know, you're you're just coming into this, man. Right. That's got to be intimidating trying to figure this out. Man, it's 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 not easy. I'm gonna say that because I mean, I was in a PCL for a little bit, and that that league there is just stupid. I mean, it was it was it was tough. What are you talking about? That's a fun league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what is it? Is it? Because I, I see the numbers in the PCL. It looks like every hitter is Barry Bonds. Like, it's just unbelievable. What, what is it about that league? Is it Because is it even a different ball than what you're using here now? They're using the it's, big league ball. It's the yeah. Big, yeah, it's the big league ball, but the elevation. So the places that you play there, it's just it, the ball flies like twice as far. So, oh. I mean, it just, I don't know. The numbers are stupid. You can look them up and it's like a 5-5 five, five ERA. That's that's an all-star. In wow. The yeah. It's yeah. that's crazy, man. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually interesting because we got we got a couple pitchers and we have a home run hitter. <laughs> so the perspective. So, I uh, see you've been around this game a long time. Are there have there been like several balls this year where you're like I'm off about the to bat. name one right now. Yeah, the ball you hit, you hit a one handed changeup dead mm-hmm. center, and here, yeah. and I'm like, 
what the, f- <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Like, and the I ball, know he's strong. The ball, you know normally, what I'm the ball normally doesn't go to center the ball here either. Don't go out <laughs> here, but it's, it's not. It's not. It's not. You know, you don't really notice it until like you see stuff happening in parks where you know guys are going way back in Comerica and, and hitting balls here and leaving Oppo and you know mm-hmm. different places where you like. Like I've been, I've been here 19 years watching this shit, and it's never happened. And all of a sudden, now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, uh, it's just crazy, man. It's it's a trip for me to watch um, some of these bigger parts kind of shrink up. It has know? it even happened when you're on the mound, see where like you'll you'll see a guy take a swing, and you're like, wow, oh, it's a fly out, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Not so much when I'm on the mound, okay? Because every time the ball goes in the air when I'm on the mound, I think it's a homer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, don't go out. But like watching the game, you know what I'm saying? Like when I'm watching games, I'm like. That ball should not have left. You know what I'm saying? It's just certain balls that we hit too. Yeah, a lot of balls. You know, and I'm like, God dang, this is crazy, man. It's a trip. You Twenty feel that? homers is like, yeah, right. It used to be like, you know, growing up watching, uh, you know, the baseball on TV. It's like, God, oh, this guy had twenty homers. That's now it. you're looking like twenty homers is like. If you hit 20 homers and you're a power guy, like, you're in trouble. Like, yeah. everybody, in Minnesota, everybody in the Twins lineup oh my got gosh, 20 homers. I know. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Like, yeah. And that park, too, the way that park shrinks mm-hmm. up, like, these are these parks used to normally play huge, and now they're just, like, shrinking, man. I think it also takes away, like, it's funny, Jay, Bruce, and I were talking when he was here with us, and it's like, the, the guys that always hit homers are always going to hit homers, you know? But now you got guys that, like, normally didn't hit homers before, and, like, now it's like, is it taking away from that home run hitter? The power you know? hitter. Yeah, like, yeah. is it taking away from the guy that's always hit 30, 35 homers, but that gets overlooked now because yeah. everybody's hitting homers. Yeah, right? that, that's right. true. Yeah. That makes sense. Like, right. Do you feel that pressure now, Dan, where it's like, hey, you know, like, I mean, because you're a home run hitter, like, hey, you, you, you can't hit 25, <laughs> yeah. you got to hit 35 or 40. Yeah. Or, yeah, I don't think it's that much. I mean... I've always believed if you hit it, it'll go. You know, yeah. I mean, obviously there's some, like she said, there's some cheap ones for sure. But if you hit it, they'll go. Now they just go a lot further than they should. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of only going ten rows back, now they're going thirty five. Last <laughs> night, Alex hit that ball. He I, he he knew he hit it good. He's like, oh shit, I got to run. That shit almost. I know. Like, hey. uh, <laughs> like, what the uh, fuck is going on, man? Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> oh. I was laughing at his reaction to like, oh shit, yeah. I ain't got to run fast. <laughs> <laughs> so justice, how do I mean? How do you account for that? Do you let it get in your head at all as you're preparing to take the mound? I mean, you can't. I mean, you just you already know what the, what the what it is. I mean, the ball's gonna fly. So I mean, you still gotta go out there and get out. So, I mean, shit. At the end of the day, if they they hit the home runs, I mean, it's gonna show a home run on the board regardless. So I mean, you just gotta go out there and and try and get them out. You know, especially with you know the Yankees being in town and stuff, all these home runs and stuff. Yeah, you know, they're gonna get it. So yeah, how are you gonna sleep tonight? About to face that lineup tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sleep good. <laughs> So now, you know what? Now, tomorrow, when I'm broadcasting the game and Justice is like shoving for six innings, I'm going to be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said he wasn't worried about it. Is this the first time, see, that the ball's been like this in your career? Yeah, this is, is the first time I'm I'm seeing like it, it's kind of, you know, these parks shrinking up. It's, yeah. it's not, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not going to blame the ball. I'm not here, you know, yeah, it, it yeah, is yeah. what it is. I'm just saying these parks that traditionally play huge are now mm-hmm. shrinking, man. It's, it's crazy. So. Yeah, it's the first yeah. time I'm seeing it, you know, and a lot of guys, you know, going oppo, hitting balls, and I'm like, what the, yeah. what the fuck is going on? Oppo but, used to be, ha- you know what I mean? Like, yeah, not, many guys- not many guys can do that. Now it's a lot of guys just, you know, pole to pole, which yeah. is, yep. it's fun. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, next year I'm going to be a fan of the game, so, you know, I don't want to come to the park and watch fucking one, one, you know, one yeah. and nothing games. So, I mean, it, I think it'll be fun as a fan, but just as a player, it's track. Yeah. It's track. <laughs> well, and there's got to be some part of it that's, like, hard to know, you know, what's real for who, right? Like, because if the ball all of a sudden, let's say they go back to, you know, because I know Major League Baseball is investigating it, right? And let's but say, I don't think they should go back to the old you, balls. Just no, you want to keep it this way? I think they should because the, how hard guys throw and, oh, you know, the shit that they have now and moving. I mean, I don't think. I mean, it'll be one nothing, two one games a lot. So Patricia, sure. Justice is looking at you like, shut your mouth. <laughs> yeah. I'm on your way, way out. I'm on my way out. Oh man. So, Justice, how about um, you know? I know just even talking to C last year and, and in 2017, he talked about you like a little brother. Yeah. To him, you know what? What you know? What was your first interactions with with C, and how did you guys kind of connect? I mean, the first time I met C, we was uh, up in New York. Uh, they did a little fan frenzy. And, uh, you know, we was at the hospital. And, you know, we talked a little bit then and, uh, you know, exchanged numbers. But uh, it really it really took off in spring training, uh, you know, with, you know, I'd go to his house. We'd just eat, chill, you know, just normal stuff. And, uh, you know, he's helped me out 
off on and off the field even this year you know i'll get a i'll get a message from him just randomly you know like what's up cuz how you doing like how's things going and you know i'll tell him and then like he'll he'll give me his input of of, of what he's thinking at that at that point and uh, you know how i'm playing and stuff like that so i mean he's he's always been there you know even when i haven't been with the Yankees so See you like. I mean, it seems like to me too. You've like taken on this role later in your career too. Yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, and and I had you know veterans that kind of helped me out. You yeah. know, you know, I always say Ellis Burks. You know, Dave Berber. Yeah. You know, Matt Lawton. Those guys really, really, really. You know, took an interest in in my career and helped me out and and turning me into a pro. So uh, I always feel you know obligated when I you know meet a, a good kid or a good you know a good person that you try to help. Yeah. Um, try to help out and, and try to navigate, you know, this baseball world is tough. What's the biggest thing you've tried to relay to Justice as he begins this major league journey? Um, just to 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 really just be himself, you know, uh, especially, you know, changing organizations. You kind of get lost a little bit and, you know, a lot of people telling you different things. And, you know, my last message to him was just remember what got you here. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, be yourself. And it's good to be coachable and listen to, you know, everything everybody has to say. But you can only – apply so much you know take what applies to you and move on you know what i'm saying you don't have to be a dick about it but you know be coachable and 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 uh you know don't forget what, what got you here for sure that's such an important piece of advice isn't it like yeah. but it, it, because people first of all not everyone knows right hopefully within your organizations most of the people who are going to be talking to you have a good idea about things but there are a lot of people throughout any career that are going to give you advice and feedback i see it in my business too and it's like i don't trust your opinion you mm-hmm. know what i mean i don't want to hear it and then even for the people who do it's like yeah but is that really me you but know? then you gotta you gotta think too the three of you guys are you know it's like su- come upcoming or at superstars that are you know prospects or whatever so everybody wants to put a stamp on mm-hmm. like oh i told chef this and this is why he, or oh, i told ryan this and this is why he does this or oh, i told vogue you know what i'm saying yeah. so everybody wants to like ha- like have that that footprint in your career so you got to be careful with that too a little bit it's a great point man it's again yeah. and it's sort of it's good because there are going to be some helpful things you Definitely, get yeah. so it's like how do you kind of determine what is helpful and what's not dan have you found yourself going through that a little bit in your career with like what to listen to and what not to yeah, I mean, because party, I mean, like she said, you want to be coachable. You don't want to be come across the guy that gets written off as like, you know, a guy doesn't listen. But at the same time, and I think what I've learned is there's really only one thing that matters, and that's performance. I mean, people can say, like, I told him to do this, but he didn't do it. But if you go out and perform, nobody's going to say anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's just literally you have to is trust yourself and, um, you know, have the confidence in yourself that not worry about what other people are going to think. You yeah. Because I think if you start – playing this game or anything in life you do it to please other people or make other people happy you're not going to be the best version of you at all you know so i think that just as long as you go out and put your head down and play and you know like there's always good things you can listen to but you know if he doesn't think you can apply to you you just listen listen nod your head and then go play You know, what, this gets me thinking, what's the most helpful piece of advice you think you've ever gotten? Whether it, whether it was like something yeah. philosophical and like foundational or it was something super specific and mechanical. What's something that you think like was like a, yeah, light bulb moment for you? Don't ride the emotional roller coaster. Who it gave you that? Be, um, it was actually my low A manager. It was like, things are going to be hard. There's always going to be tough times. There's going to be great times. But if we just keep going up and down, we're going to drive ourselves crazy. So it's just as hard as it is because I'm an emotional player, you know, and as hard as it is just to try try to stay as even keel the whole way through the ups and downs and, you know, the great times not get super high and when you're in a slump, not getting super low. It's tough, but I think that that if you can do that, I think that's what limits the slumps. Well, how about you, Justice? Is there? I mean, obviously you're you're a young dude, but yeah. but you've played a lot of baseball to get to this point. Still, right? Is there is there some sort of specific piece of of wisdom you you can think about that you always go back to? Well, I can say this: this year when I was struggling, you know, I got demoted down to Double A, and uh, C actually hit me up, and it was like perfect timing because I just got demoted. I don't even know if he knew that that I did or not, um, but he was just telling me like. You know, go out there and 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 be yourself, like you said earlier. But he was like, "Fuck everybody else that's that's on the other side of you." You know, anybody else that's in a box, like forget them. Just just do you, trust your stuff, and and go out there and and literally try and 
try and put motherfuckers down like that, stepping in the box. And I, he was like <laughs> putting that, putting that, yeah. that, that anger back in me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was kind of trying to find myself again. Cause you know, I'm a very competitive pitcher. Like I get out there, I show emotion and stuff and I, I, you know, I like to get after it, but you know, for some reason this year, um, I think I was doing too much and trying to impress too many people and, you know, kind of lost, lost my way a little bit. And then, you know, he told me that. And, you know, ever since then I really, I took off and, uh, you know, finally made my way back up here. You could be, you could be a nice guy. You could be kind. You could listen, whatever. But you also have that, like, I'm, I'm about to do this. So yeah, get I mean, out of the way. The, the perp, like, when I was younger, like, a, a lot of people would, like I said, would always try to tell me shit. And, like, the one thing, like, when I was, I, I tried to learn how to throw a slider. And they would always try to tell me, no, nah, you got to do this grip, do that grip. And I would get in the bullpen and, and I would throw it how they want me to throw it. And I would get in the game and I would throw my grip. <laughs> and everybody would be like, oh, see, I told you. I'd be like, yeah, you told me. <laughs> 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 it's all right. You did it. <laughs> you told me to slide it. <laughs> That's all they want. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, right. like he said, at the end yeah. of the day, it all, all they care about is fucking performance. Nobody yeah. gives a shit. Right. right. You You're know right. what I'm saying? You're like, 100% if you, right. If you, if you play well, you got to do whatever you, you can do to, to play well, no matter mm-hmm. what that is. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know yourself better than anybody. So... At the end of the day, they they won't give a shit, man. Because I think it's also like you listen to everything everybody says, but if you don't perform, you'll be the first one out. Yeah, so like yep. they're just gonna keep keep you around because you listened. You know, like you still have to perform. <laughs> hey, like, yeah, yeah, right. That's, that's a great point. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what. Well, yeah, yeah, they just hit you know three straight home runs. Yeah, but I used the grip. Yeah. You told me. Yeah. <laughs> Do I get to start in five days? Yeah. It's true. I I used to always say this like um I like playing baseball in in high school. The thing that would drive me nuts is when I somebody give you some piece of advice that like wasn't tangible to you and it just gets in your head. So the famous phrase for for me for that for my hitting coaches would be, you know, just trust your hands. And I would always be like, what does that mean? You know? like, like, because now I'm in the box thinking, okay, I got to trust my hand. How do I do that? You know, like, like I, so I I have a my producer for Brooklyn Nets games. Frank DeGrace is maybe the best basketball producer in the country. He's unbelievable. And he always jokes with me because he'll give me specific things that I love. Like, hey, at the end of a game, don't like turn everything into a run on sentence. Like have a final call. Like, so it's like ball game. Yankees win 5-4, ninth straight series win in Seattle. Something like that, right? And mm-hmm. then you can get into the other stuff, but like punctuate it, whatever. Yeah. He gives me those kind of things. That's one throughout my career. And I'm like, yes, like that's a tangible piece of advice I can easily apply that's not getting in my head and also doesn't shake the foundation yeah. of are you believed in or not. You mm-hmm, know what yeah. I mean? Like, because sometimes if people get too broad with their advice and stuff, like, you're like, like damn, yeah, do you want to change yeah. everything? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You don't even throw right handed. I'll throw right handed. <laughs> you know what I mean? They do, man. See, is there something you always go back to that you could think of that you were told? At some point Man, early the, on, the biggest thing for me, I'm a, I'm super emotional, so it was always even killed. But the biggest thing for me, it, it, like, was always just to be humble. Like my mom taught me that when I was really young, and and it's always ha- always had to apply that. You know, every time I thought I had this game figured out, <clears throat> you know, I, I've you know gotten off to the worst start of my career or had the be- worst half. You know what I'm saying? So it's always just about being humble, always want you know willing to learn and and uh, you know, like I said, being coachable, but. It, it like this game will humble you, you yeah. Know? yeah and my mom always told me that and then when jeet was here it was just another person that you know you'd always just be like be humble you know stay humble so um that that was always my biggest piece of advice i feel like in this sport you need it right because oh, it's you, hard but some people aren't man and, <laughs> <laughs> you know this but. is where c names names and, <laughs> <laughs> you know but i because like you have to you have to deal with you have to you have to be understanding that you're going to fail, right? Yeah, like otherwise, yeah. it's going to eat you up. Kind of yeah. like what you were talking about mm-hmm. with the emotional roller coaster. No yeah. doubt. In this game, it will eat you up. Then, so justice. I know. I know these two dudes are huge sports fans. Uh, are you that way too? Do you? Are you watching other sports a lot? You have yeah. teams. I watch sports. I, watch, I like the Titans. You know, being oh, from Tennessee. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like All the right. Titans. So. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully we can do something this year, man. It's been a rough. <laughs> Y'all need a quarterback, Existence? guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I think I think Mariota can do it, man. He just he just he ain't had the line the past couple of years, and you know yeah, we started really never together. had no big receivers either. Right, huh? like, right. No, I mean we got Davis a couple of years ago, like last two years ago. But I mean you got some running backs, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We're straight, but uh, we're gonna see. I mean we're having a decent uh, we're having a decent uh, preseason right now, so. Uh, 
We'll see. It's a fun time of year, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Football season. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, college football season. Season. College, college football, football, football gets you through the last yeah, month yeah, of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you a big college football guy now? I am. Who's, I'm a who's, Gator. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Nice, man. So. And, you're, and you're a Bengal fan in the NFL, though, right? My One, uh, one of my best friends is the backup quarterback for the Bengals. He played at Florida. So I, I didn't – I like I watched the NFL before he was with them. But, like, I would just, like – Love watching Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Didn't have really a team, just watch guys. So, like, I didn't have a team. So, when he was drafted by the Bengals, I'm like, all right, just be a Bengals fan now. (laughs) (laughs) So, now you're all in on the team, no matter, like, if he leaves, will you still be a Bengals fan? I was going to say, I I won't be going up to Cincinnati if he's not there. (laughs) Because you could subject yourself to a lot of pain, like this guy and his Raiders. fucking Raiders. I I wish I could not be a fucking Raider fan. (laughs) It's fucking hard, man. Oh, man. How are they going to turn it around See? fuck no no <laughs> no this it, show hard knocks is making it even man. worse man <laughs> is, I think Gr- AB, is gruden not the guy i don't think he's the guy no no nah. and i think ab they is sure just paid gonna, him like the guy they did what was it 10 years 100 10 million? years 100 Damn. and i think ab is just gonna destroy that that locker room really man. like when shit's not yeah, right yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's already getting bad and he ain't they ain't even played a game or nothing yet and yeah that's they got the helmet shit. He's filed grievances twice. Like it's just. Man. Is he even showing up yet? He's he's there, but he's he he just put the helmet on today. <sighs> so, I mean, just say you don't want to practice in the preseason. You know what I'm saying? Instead yeah, of causing yeah, drama, yeah, like he like. just don't want to practice. Yeah. Like just say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Like well, that's what Strayan did back in the day. Remember, and then he came back. He had a great year, and everyone was like, "All right, he doesn't need to practice." Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like. He, he's like, I don't, I'm not doing training camp. I don't want to. Okay, well, we don't love that, but, you know, at least we know what your deal is. I I would think that's got to be so hard to feel like you're going forward as, like, a unified group when you when have When you this, don't have your best player yeah, on board. Man. And he's Especially, the best yeah. player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, in football, you have to have your best player on board, yeah. and they don't have that. So. I think that's why the Patriots are so good. I mean, you never hear about anything. Like, if one player – they traded Collins to the Browns for a six round draft pick, and he was the best defensive player on their team because he was causing problems. Belichick just said, Say, I'll here. get somebody yeah. else. Like, yeah. You never hear and about. And we'll still win the Super Bowl. Yeah, like, but you yeah. good organizations. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, like, the Raiders trade Khalil Mack. For what? Yeah. He's a great, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he shows up he's every day. He works player. hard. Yeah. <laughs> he's the best defensive player in the league. Yeah. He's never been in trouble off the field. No. And you don't want to pay him. Why? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just, I agree. Yeah. It's just bad organizations stay bad when they do stupid shit like that. Right. Because you hear, like, I mean, the Patriots had when Chad Johnson with their Randy Moss, and they were, there's always something going on on other teams. And then they went there. You Model never heard. Citizens. Yeah. Never. Josh Gordon. Like, you know, like. I just think that it's uh, that's a huge it's the key culture. of why they win. Yeah. yeah, it's the culture for sure. No doubt. If you're going to have an issue, they're, they're just not going to tolerate exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's as simple as that. The I, I mean, did I read correctly too, Dan, that like Brady was a guy you always looked to too because of him kind of being you know, overlooked and beating the odds and doing his thing? I, I just like, – I mean, I don't know what the guy has to continue to do. There's still people out there that don't think he's – like give him credit for what he's done. I just – I mean, the guy is – he never hear about him anything off the field in trouble. He works his butt off, and he just every year you can count on he's going to be in the Super Bowl. Like, yeah, and he's never. I just like he's never out of a game. Like if he has the ball in the fourth quarter and they have a chance to win, they're going to win. Like, yeah, it's, I love the fact that he he went from the guy the not to fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? Like just you mm-hmm. know don't make turnovers, control. The, you let the defense. He's a win game changer or a game manager. To, yeah. Now he's the best quarterback of all time. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like. Mm-hmm. He he worked his ass off to become what he kind of like Steph Curry. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just like they, they had the talent, but it just didn't happen overnight. Yeah, and Steph they had was to work. Davidson you know and everybody like, was like, "Oh, he's just a small guard. You know, he can play anybody in college. He's never going to be anything." Next thing you know, he's best three point shooter of all time. Yeah, yeah. He's the best shooter yeah. of all time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Brady's the best quarterback yeah. of all time. You know, not didn't even start in college, like playing behind Drew Henson, who was actually a baseball player. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so it's just it's it's pretty cool to see that like. You know, to see him, you know, what he is now after, after you know, so much adversity as a young mm-hmm. player. Justice, who were some of your favorite athletes uh, growing up? For me, uh, I'd probably have to go with Mike Vick. He was he was a guy that I always loved to watch, man. It was just oh, he's so he yeah. was so oh, so my close. God. Man. And playing with him in Madden, oh man, man that was he was Madden so good in the NFL. But uh, it, him at Virginia Tech wasn't uh, even fair. It was oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was stupid. Tech, bro. It yeah. was not even. I mean, <laughs> that was a good era for college football. That was when USC was yes, really good. Yes, yeah, Reggie yes, Bush from Atlanta. Talk about some athletes yeah, in that era. Man. It was oh, crazy. crazy. I love that. All right, so Vic was one of your guys. Vic was a guy. Uh, I'm a huge LeBron fan. Yeah, love LeBron. 
Well, this podcast is produced by Uninterrupted, so he'll appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that LeBron's listening to our episodes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, um, I mean, that's just a few. Uh, so, shit, I just, I just love watching, love watching sports. Honestly, yeah. like anybody who's who's versatile, anybody who like a quarterback who can run it, like Lamar Jackson. I love watching Lamar Jackson. Mm. Um, you know, I'm excited to to see what uh, um, Murray's going to do this year. Um, you know, just just love watching versatile quarterbacks. I'm nervous like for Kyler Murray, man. I, I want him to be good. I think he's really good. I want the NFL to draft more quarterbacks like him, but it's, it depends on him. But see, I think that yeah, I think that uh, you know I think saying? Baker kind of broke that barrier a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think but he's a little small. He, oh yeah, you know, he's definitely you know a little saying? smaller. Like, everybody was skeptical about Baker. You know, yeah. he's small. I don't know if he's going to do it. And now everybody's oh, all on so the I'm Baker. Gonna, I'm excited yeah. to see yeah. the Browns. The Browns, <laughs> excited to see the Browns. <laughs> I just don't know like his attitude as a quarterback, like how long. That's going to run. I know. But right now, it's great. I well, when it. you're winning, it'll be great. But yeah. like, if they start losing these like that, people may turn on it. <laughs> so bad. And Cleveland's, a, Cleveland's such a great sports town that when the Browns are good, that that city's going to light up, bro. Oh. Really? Even more so than LeBron. Like that's they that that's a football town. So if the Browns are good, like that city's going to be on fire, bro. It's yeah. going to be crazy. That's funny. So that's Jay was Bruce's time. Like when he was at the Indians and they're in the playoffs, he's like, dude, it was nothing like it. Like when we were in the playoffs, like yeah. that, that place, place is, yeah. is electric. That's what he was it's saying. It's unbelievable there. Those fans get, get into it. So you're a LeBron guy. What do you think about the Lakers this year, man? Is that who you root for then? Because wherever he goes, or no? Nah, I mean, <laughs> I, I I like the Lakers just yeah. because LeBron is there. I will yeah. say, <laughs> <laughs> I did like watching the Cavs when he was there. But uh, I mean, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see. I mean, they just they. Just, I thought they were going to be better last year. Yeah. Um, they 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 didn't really come out and do it. I thought they would, but um, we'll see with these moves they made. Um. You know, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do. I'm interested to see what, like, Anthony Davis yeah, there right. in the Lakers uniform. That's going to be sick. Right. Yeah, That's going to be pretty dope. thing about LeBron that I like is, he, like, I don't think he's that guy. Like, he's best. He's the best in the league, but he doesn't have, he doesn't shoot the ball 40 times a game. Like, he can play with other superstars. Yeah. Right? Yes. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't need the ball every time. Sometimes, like, I know people get mad about it. Like, they wish he would have take. he takes the right, ball right, more. Right, yeah. Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> But he, I feel like he can always, and I think that's kind of like the Kyrie thing. Like, Kyrie didn't realize how good he had it, and then he came out and said, like, you know, like, man. I almost I went to the Lakers yeah. this year. <laughs> hey, I'm glad he came to Brooklyn with us, man. I'm excited about that. Kate. He almost went back, man. Damn. He but, forced his way out of Cleveland, talked all that shit, and then almost went back to L.A. <laughs> oh, what the man. fuck? Man, you know what? They, it, like, it, it's, not, it's not the exact same thing, right? But, like, you know how like Kobe and, and Shaq now go back and say, "Man, how many championships could we have won mm-hmm. if we stuck together?" You know, like you- nah, not not because Shaq wasn't like even Shaq. He was out of shape and shit. He, he wasn't was letting in his Kobe. Prime, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I don't know. I think Kobe is the same way as LeBron though. Like he could play with. I think you could put anybody on Kobe's team and he could play. Yeah, you, you know, know what I mean. He's not a. He's just. I think some guys just have a knack for being that type of guy. I'm right. interested to see Dwight Howard there, though. Like, I, yeah. what, what, what's this going to be? Oh, like? my yeah, God. Dwight yeah. Howard back in L.A. for another <laughs> run. What the fuck I, is going on? I think one of the craziest things I've ever seen calling. So I, I, I call a lot of NBA games for ESPN and then Brooklyn Nets games. And one time I was calling an NBA game. I'm calling a Nets game against the, uh, I think it was when he was with the Hornets, maybe. And I'm walking back. I forgot something in the TV truck. And, I, and I, it's like 30 minutes before the game. And I go, maybe maybe it's a little more, but it's not much. And I go back to go to the truck. There's Dwight Howard walking into the arena for the start <laughs> of the game. And I go, I was like, what is going on here, man? Like, so, I, so I'm like, then I'm like, I'm starting to ask around. I was like, is this a normal thing for him to like show up? 30 35 minutes before, minutes before yeah, the game what? or whatever. Like, yeah. And I guess, like, I, I don't know all the details. So <laughs> all I know is that one instance, it definitely happened. I mean, it was some absurd time close to the game. But then, like, I, you never know if, like, people have, like, weird habits for how they get ready. I don't yeah. I didn't I mean, know. Yeah. I mean, because you know, know they do shoot around tape. in the morning. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. You just got to get know. there to get taped and, and, and get out on the, on the court. I so. don't know, man. It was strange. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I don't, That's wild. Yeah, it was. It was a. 
it, it was it was crazy. Hey, I'm I, just laughing. I'm looking at Laker man, like him being a hidden coach. He man, I love Lake. Lake is awesome, man. Yeah. I didn't like, know. How, yeah, we played I didn't together. Know how close, close. Yeah. Oh, you played with him. Yeah. yeah, we were really close. We were really close when we played together, and you know, getting a chance to reconnect now, but. It's just hilarious. Like some of the people that you don't, <laughs> you never think would be a fucking coach. And now he's like coaching oh. young players. I'm like, what the fuck? So he wasn't a figure of, uh, of discipline. <laughs> None of us were. Right. Right. <laughs> I got you, Justice. What was it like, man, making your first uh, start, first uh, big league start, man? man? It was, it was, it was almost like it was about time, man. I was tired of coming out of the bullpen when I came up here. It was just, <laughs> it was like finally I can get in like a little comfortable role and. You know what I've been used to doing my whole life, but you know it was it was fun. I you know it was uh, had a rough first inning, long ass first inning uh, <laughs> through like thirty eight pitches, something like that. I'm I'm gassed after the first, but you know I, uh, you know, I was able to get through four and uh, you know uh, kept us in it, and you know we ended up winning the game. So um, you know we'll, we'll see when the next one comes, but you know I'm excited just because of the the circumstances and things like that, but. Yep. Yeah, man, you got to And you, I mean, it's it, now when you when you go up against the Yankees on uh, Wednesday, this is going to be released Thursday morning. So it will have happened. I mean, is there a party that says, hey, that's the team that traded me. I'm going to I want to I want to go stick it to him. Yeah, I mean, 100 yeah. uh, <laughs> percent. Shit. Any, anytime I even play the Indians, I still want to, you know, go oh, yeah. Them, you know? So it's like, yeah. It's yeah. like there's there's always that that chip on my shoulder just because of that. But, um, you know, it's going to be cool to see some familiar faces in the box and, you know, uh you going against the you know the best team in baseball, um, one of the best teams in baseball lineup wise. I mean, it's going to be fun. So we'll see. By the way, how about this Ichiro's out here still like you know Shag- yeah, running yeah. down balls in right field? I don't think man. you'll ever meet a guy that loves baseball more than Ichiro. No, I don't think so either. <clears throat> His routine is insane, man. The was, guy is. I'm so glad I got a chance to play with him. He like is, and just oof. to see it up close. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's still during the game. He's still down in the cage. Hitting. He's hitting, doing his workout routine. They got all his uh, his machines, machines down, there. down there. He's always down there. And now he loves throwing batting practice. Throwing he batting practice. Gas batting practice. I'm and sure a lot of the guys like cheap. it's almost like a live uh, fuzz machine, fastball machine. Like he'll get in there and he just he'll throw. Ripping. Malik's loves. That's part of Malik's routine now. Like, but he just man, the guy loves baseball. It is. Do you wow. know what's crazy is that like we came up into the big leagues the same year, right? Oh one. And we retire in the same year. And if I go in the Hall of Fame on the first ballot, we'll go in the same time. Oh, really? wow, yeah. man. Yeah, that'd That's be really super, cool. That would be super cool. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, I man. mean, obviously, you know he's going in first ballot. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah. So that that'd be, be cool. That would be really cool, man. I, what? A, how awesome is that? That he so, so he has all special machines that he does for his. He's, yeah, got, his, it, he's got special like workout machines. Yeah. Oh, really? It's really. I mean, he's. It, he's a machine. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he'll still he goes if he would take batting practice right now, he would just launch homers. The whole. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. He could have won the home run derby. Oh, easy. That's what everybody says. Easy. And then I came over when he was uh, over here. I was like, everybody, everybody said it, and this is impressive. Like, and he speaks perfect English to you guys in yes. the clubhouse, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's. I think that cracks me up too. Like, because like you know, I only dealt with him a little bit when he was with the Yankees, but like. You know, all of a sudden, it's just like, hey, how you doing? And you're like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> the, first time, the first time yeah. I realized he spoke, he spoke perfect English, it was at the All-Star game in 07. And back in back then, like the All-Star game, everybody used to leave early. Like, if you got came out of the game, you get your flight, whatever, you're gone. So he busted play, whatever, got a couple hits. And he was trying to leave, but they wanted him to stay because he won the MVP. Yeah. And he was going off, <laughs> cussing up a storm. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Oh, he was so bad, bro. And he was cussing. It was, it was, it was, it was awesome. Oh, that's tremendous. It was so funny. Now we could do this all day, guys. You guys are terrific. Uh, C has a bullpen, so he's ruining our fun. Right? <laughs> but uh, we, the shift episodes, um, are a special uh, version of R two C two. The MLB PA sponsors these episodes because they saw we were doing it R two C two. They loved it. They wanted to get involved and also bring sort of this roundtable discussion feel with other teams. And we've loved doing it. And we end all these episodes just by asking you guys, what do you love most about the game? And what's one thing you would change about the game? So, Dan, I'll start with you. Um, man, what one thing I love. It's hard to say one thing because there's so many great things about this game. Um, but the one thing is just the, the competitiveness of every – like you watch CC pitch and you watch these guys like – just the energy that is brought, like I think that's obviously the play and the talent from minor leagues to you know the big leagues is the biggest jump. But just the energy and the competitiveness of people, it's 
you can't sit in the stands or you can't watch on TV and like describe it, you know, like until you're on the field and see how competitive people are and like just how every single night someone is trying to take your job, you know, and it's just, I love that because it brings out the best in you, you know, because yeah. if you're not competitive and you're not that way, you're going to get, you're going to get buried so you're fast. Get a lot. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, it's your, your stay is going to be very short. Um, That's awesome. That's a great answer. And how about one thing you would change about the um, end? Man. Pitchers throw less uh, with less velocity. <laughs> Good answer, man. Oh man, everybody throws gas. Now, oh man. my gosh, I mean, their long guy Sessa throws ninety-seven. He's the long guy in the yeah. bullpen. <laughs> it is crazy, isn't it, man? Oh man, it is. Wow, it's wild. It's, a joke it's unbelievable. Right How about you, Justice? What's uh, the thing you love most? Probably. Uh, I mean, for me, it would probably just be, you know, meeting meeting new people, um, you know, gr- out there grinding with uh, guys from all over. Um, you know, I've got the chance to, you know, play with, you know, future Hall of Famers and, you know, um, guys that are all stars and things like that and getting to pick their brain and, and just learning and growing every day, you know. Um, even though I don't realize it, you know, on a daily basis, I'm learning, um, just watching the game and, and being out there with these guys and asking questions and, and, and things like that. That's, that's probably what I love most about the game is just, you know, that, that, that locker room vibe and, and, um, you know, just being around the fellas and, and going out there and, 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 you know, putting on a show, you know, for all these fans and, and, and going out there with a goal and just win the game. And I know you're new to the show, but do you have something that you'd want to most change about the game? Yeah, uh, unlike C, I take them damn b- baseballs away. <laughs> <laughs> well, CeCe's out. He doesn't care anymore. <laughs> He's fine with it, man. He's Get the balls out of here. <laughs> By the way, see, you know, one thing uh, I, I, I should have gotten to, like, who could throw down more, you or – or Vogelback over here, at, if you guys were at like I don't know one of your places in Kansas City or something oh, yeah, at barbecue. For sure. I just you look like you could, you could probably you look yeah. like you could clean a plate, man. <laughs> it depends what it is. I'm picky though. That's oh the thing. really? Yeah, barbecue I like. Just yeah. okay. I mean the South and being yeah, but yeah, I mean it depends what it is. So okay, I mean, what, what's your what's like a go to meal for you? Oh, mom cooks. Um, she does this like well, we do. If I have any, if I could pick anything, it's fish. Just from being home, I fish all the time, and yeah. fresh fish is you can cook it however. And I, I love the raw uh, grill. Doesn't matter how. You yeah, know, you get a good little tuna, and I just fillet it and eat it right. Eat it off the eat it off the boat. Wow, <laughs> man! Oh man, yeah. that's hardcore, yeah. dude. That's good. It's good. Yeah. See, I don't know if I've ever asked you that. What your favorite meal is, man? I don't think I have a favorite meal. I eat everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It don't. It no, ain't I know really that. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, I, like breakfast. Yeah, it, you know any breakfast like type of meal? It have to be breakfast. Justice, I got to get you in on this too. Yeah, mine's got to be breakfast too. Yeah, breakfast. I can eat that shit at day Grits, nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it don't matter yeah. what it is. Oh, man. I love it. Well, hey guys, thank you uh, no, for being you. with us, man. We yeah. appreciate you guys appreciate hanging you with us. us. Good luck. Uh, good luck the next couple days against the Yankees. Justice, good luck to you in this game uh, and and moving forward, man. Excited to watch your career, bro. Appreciate it. And, Thanks, uh, fellas. Thank yeah, you, thank you uh, guys. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you yeah. for hanging out and being being such wonderful engaged participants. <laughs> and you know what? See, I guess we should ask them to uh, finish our episode with the uh, oh, yeah rate, subscribe, and yeah, review. Yeah, we always tell our audience to rate, review, subscribe to R two C two. But we like to we like to have our guests do it. So you guys want to just let our audience know? Yeah, yeah, guys, rate, review, and subscribe. Rate, review, and subscribe. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very nice. Thank you, guys. Yeah, appreciate thank you. It.